It's David Benzer back with the Hannibal TV. We've made our way to Madison Square Garden for the Ring of Honor Fan Fest. And I am here with the Ring of Honor World Champion, Jay Lethal. Jay, I've known you a long time. Um, I was riding on the Jersey Turnpike heading towards New York, and I, I saw a sign last night that said Elizabeth, New Jersey. Mm. Mm. And I couldn't help but think what... A kid from Elizabeth, New Jersey, who grew up a wrestling fan who, who's worked so hard, might be thinking to cross over the bridge of uh, the Lincoln Tunnel and headline Madison Square Garden. Well, to be honest, as brutally honest as I can, Pender, I'm terrified. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. I Just thinking about it is making the back of my neck sweat. Um, and here's why I'm terrified. This is not just the biggest moment in Ring of Honor's history. This is a big moment for professional wrestling. What this event is representing, uh, things that we thought in this business that were impossible are becoming possible. Walls that we thought were impenetrable in this business are crumbling, crumbling down. Yes, sir. Because um, wrestling's on this boom period right now. It's this one-way trip up. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, as many fingers as I can cross, uh, hopefully this is not a one and done for Ring of Honor. If it is, I'm glad that I was a part of this event uh, running in the garden. But I think because of the wrestling boom period right now, um, this is just the tip of the iceberg for things in the wrestling business that we thought were impossible. Sure. You know? You know, there's not a lot, not just about you, not about me, but you say that there's not... A a lot left on my bucket list of things to do in the wrestling business. I've got to live my dream, but the one thing left to check off that uh, I won't be checking off tomorrow night, but you will, is to uh, be in Madison Square Garden. So congratulations. Thank you. Tell Thank me about you the right. journey. Um, you've stayed here for the long haul and it's paid off for you. Uh, has there ever been a time that you've thought about moving on and uh, are you happy that you stayed? Hey, well, here's the thing about that. Well, when, we, when, when I think about my journey because of what's about to happen tomorrow, it starts way sooner than that. Uh, at a company called Jersey All Pro Wrestling in Bayonne, New Jersey, um, I won a contest. They, they were big on Tough Enough, MTV Tough Enough, um, and they liked it so much that they had their own little contest, and I was one of the winners of that contest. That is where it started for me. I won the Willy Wonka Golden Ticket, the golden ticket. Um, and my very first match ever was in a liquor store. Well, it's not a liquor store now. It, it's this tiny little bodega place. They had bingo in it a few times um the locker room was just it wasn't a real locker room it was just the guys got dressed in the corner and they just put tarp and drape over uh, over that one corner and that's where you got dressed now starting from that point on and fast forwarding to me wrestling in the most famous arena in the world like i couldn't have written this story sure. any better um but to answer your question never did i think for a second, never did Ring of Honor, the company, give me any moment to think about going anywhere else. I've had the pleasure of wrestling in other locker rooms. I've had great times in other locker rooms. But the one thing that sets this moment apart, this locker room is, and it's going to be hard for the fans to grasp, but uh, I have been given the opportunity to present my ideas and have them listened and not just heard but actually listened and my ideas they bounce my ideas off them and they shoot it back with a changing and back and forth I've been in plenty of companies where they hear they just hear your idea but they never let you run with it this company lets me run with it now here's the wildest part about wrestling when you let someone run with their idea as a professional wrestling company if you let a professional wrestler run with his idea he will put his heart he will put his soul into it because he is out to prove that not only is he a great wrestler, he has great ideas, he is one of the best in his business, and that is when you find out who a true professional wrestler is. And Ring of Honor takes the the amount, the, the tremendous stock, it's risky, sure, but they put that stock in a professional wrestler and they let them run with their idea, and it's wild, it's crazy, of course, Ring of Honor's not circulating around these heavy storylines, um, but they give the wrestlers a chance and it really makes us excel. It's the biggest difference, it's something that I, I, I now that I've had, I would never dream of losing that part of of wrestling uh, in any other locker room. So if I had to go to another locker room knowing that I couldn't have that, it'd be a tough choice to make. It's called making an investment in the talent, right. letting them run with it. 100%, 100%. Especially since, Penzer, especially since this company was built on great matches, not great storylines. This company was built on matches like CM Punk versus Samoa Joe. This company was built on matches like Nigel McGuinness versus Daniel Bryan, or 
Brian Danielson, as we know him. Uh, so when a wrestler has an idea here, it's not so much, oh, I, I got this Doink the Clown idea. It's not so much his storyline. It's, uh, hey, I can have a fantastic match with that guy if you make it happen. So it, it's a little easier to go with the idea. Risky, sure, because it could sure. bomb, but... Here, it's, it's, it's all about what the company was founded upon, which is producing great matches um, that stand the test of time. As the world champion, it's a little nervous for me because I got to make sure that this company doesn't take a downward slope or a downward trend while I'm at the helm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a little nerve wracking for, I'm sure you understand, it's nerve wracking for me. I don't want to be at the wheel and that's when the company starts going down. They used to produce these great matches, you know, <laughs> oh no. As the champion, I need them to keep thinking and keep feeling like these matches that Beerum produce are just as good as the ones in 2003, 2004, 2005. Um, that's why I'm so nervous. God, you're making me nervous. <laughs> so, you know, not to take the spotlight off of Ring of Honor, but I do a podcast called City Ringside every week, and we talk a lot about, with the talent, and love to get you on, uh, and we talk a lot about uh, just my life, you know, as a wrestler, a wrestling fan, and as a, a uh, in the business. And one of the stories that I actually, we were talking um, this past week uh, about it is uh, probably once a month, I go out, have a few vodkas <laughs> with the wife, okay. listen to some music, come back, pour me a couple more vodkas, <laughs> but it's three o'clock in the morning on a, uh, on a, on a Saturday night. And, and I recommend this to everybody. We talk about this on, my, on the podcast a lot. I recommend this. And I guess what I pull up? Guess. What? The, the, the woo off. Is it the woo off? Ric Flair and Jay Lethal. Maybe, maybe the greatest segment in the history of professional wrestling. And I don't say that lightly. Here's the, here's the thing about that. I didn't realize I could do a Ric Flair impression until I had a few drinks. Because we, we were on a UK we were on a UK tour, and on one of the off days we all were at the bar. I had a little too much to drink. The next day, everyone's like giving me the Four Horsemen sign. Like that that's how I realized. So it's funny that you said what your little method that you do before you actually watch it, because it's actually how I figured out I could do the uh, Ric Flair impression, which is which is wild. I highly recommend about once a month have a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> About two, it has to be after 2 a.m. Put, put on YouTube and check out that segment. Awesome. I do it about once a month and it's n it never stops being entertaining. What, what were That's you thinking awesome. when you were doing it? I was terrified, like I am today. There uh, you go. At least you have I, some experience with that. I, I have plenty of experience being terrified. So t today I'm terrified for what the event means tomorrow. Back then I was terrified because that company, uh, Impact, had never given me a live microphone to go in front of a live crowd to cut a live promo and the very first time they do that I'm in there with the greatest promo man in the history of this business so that's why I was terrified there tomorrow I'm terrified because Ring of Honor New Japan have made this event right but now because of everything that this event represents it has now become bigger than both companies sure. because this this event is going to send ripples in the wrestling world not just a company not this just one company will feel it the wrestling world is going to feel and be affected by what happens tomorrow um, and that's got that's why I'm so nervous as well as the champion of Ring of Honor at a pivotal point in time uh, that's going to affect the wrestling business uh, it's terrifying well, uh, we hope that it all works out. I'm sure it will. Good luck to you. Take Thank a you. deep breath. And uh, I'm really happy for your success. Uh, and uh, the kid from Elizabeth, New Jersey, who wrestled in a liquor store. Probably not a great place to have wrestling <laughs> matches. <laughs> but uh, ends up headlining Madison Square Garden. The first company, non-WWE, WWF, to, to wrestle in Madison Square Garden. Ah, you know what? That, that liquor store, I remember, it was called the Charity Hall. It was Jersey All Pro Wrestling's home. And you know... You know, I got the same story as a lot of other wrestlers when we when we break into the business. These little companies, they just got to run the, the shows wherever they can. Sure. And it just so happened to be this place in Bayonne, New Jersey, where Jersey All Pro Wrestling ran most of their events, and they took a chance on me. And here's the thing I didn't mention about that wrestling contest I won. They only picked three winners, and I wasn't one of the three. But afterwards, when we were all filing out, they said, because he was so young, which is why we didn't pick him, but now we change our mind, we're going to add a fourth winner, that was me. So they took a chance on me, and look where I ended up. I mean, like I said, 
I couldn't have written this story any better than it already is. This is it's wild to me. It's so crazy. It's a great story. Soak it up tomorrow night. Enjoy it. I'm sure you'll tear the house down, and we thank you for your time. Thank you very much.